We found a high curb so Addy could feel a little special back there, almost as high as I am. So what we're gonna go through is, we've been getting on all these questions of, hey, you know, Multnomah County versus Washington, Clackamas County, where should you move to? So stay tuned and let's go through some of those different intricacies. What's up everybody, it's Lucas Holt, your local realtor for Southwest Washington as well as the greater Portland area. And this small guy behind me is Addy Nett. Back, Back at, at it again. again. He is my team lender for you guys. He gets you the money. Ooh. So again, what we're going through today is Multnomah County versus Clackamas in Washington County. What are some of the differences for you guys? Why should you lean from one county to the other? We get these questions all the time on our Zoom calls with you guys. So again, these Zoom calls are designed to help you start navigating our different markets out there. So give us a call, give us a text, give us an email anytime 24 seven, put us to work for you guys and let's start having those discussions. And again, if you haven't done so yet, hit like, subscribe and that little bell button be notified every time we put out a new video. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we have to talk about with Multnomah County is going to be your taxes and your tax differentiation between if you live in that Portland area or if you're gonna go out into the burbs in Washington County, just as simple as moving just a little bit further west into Beaverton there for you that's going to be Washington County. So the first thing to think about taxes, we get asked this all the time, yeah. the, let's be honest, it's kind of like a wealth tax that we have here. Mm. It's called the school for all essentially, right? Mm. So that tax is going to hit the, the uh, Multnomah County proper people. They're actually going to be paying, if you're making over 200K jointly filed, or 150K single filers, you're going to get an extra percentage of your income actually taxed in Multnomah County. So we have a lot of you high income workers contacting us, wondering how you can keep more money in your pocket at the end of the day. And one simple thing, one answer to that is move away from Multnomah County, start looking at Washington and Clackamas. Yep easiest thing you can do <clears throat> and of course we got to disclose we're not tax accountants you can google that tax but there's a little extra you got to cut off for those high income earners and people flock up to the the washington county which is going to be on the edge of portland out to beaverton and beyond save a little money there you do also need to uh consult with us because there's certain yep. areas that are higher property taxes so you might be giving it up by being in certain areas um overall most of the time washington county and clackamas county are gonna have cheaper, cheaper property, property tax but there are these little pockets that are high taxed. oh yeah oh yeah so we're walking around the northwest hills right now so we can show you that on the map beautiful. right here for you and beautiful beautiful area with that being said we're helping list a lot of houses in this area right now <clears throat> and the reason for that is because of the additional taxes being right on the border of Multnomah County and Washington for you so all those additional taxes and your property taxes for you are extremely high in this area being so close to downtown and all of that so it's a very tax burdened area right here. So let's move on from taxes for you. Let's talk a little bit about market stability for us. Mm. So historically what we've seen is that Multnomah County is going to be a lot less stable of a market in total than what Clackamas and Washington County are going to be. Now, in my opinion, I think the reason for that is you definitely, Multnomah County is primarily comprised of Portland and Gresham for you. Those are two pretty, I'd say those are those those aren't very stable markets. Right. Portland especially is going to be when the when the market's hot that market's gonna be freaking hot for you. Especially when we're talking about the east side of town, your Almeidas, your Fremont, your uh, Hawthorne districts for you. Those areas when the market is hot, we're selling houses 100, 200, 300K above list all the time for you. But 
the flip side to that is when the market goes down, those houses <clears throat> tend to sit a little bit. That's where we see the decline in property value. Now, when we go out to Washington County, to Clackamas County, looking at Beaverton, Hillsborough, Lake Oswego, Happy Valley, um, Oregon City, all of those tend to be a much more stable market. Everybody wants to get into those school districts for us. So it just tends to even out the housing costs. You're not going to see a huge uptick in property values over years. Um, but it's going to be a much more stable increase in my opinion. Yeah, I love what you said there, <clears throat> Lucas, to kind of summarize it into something a little more simplistic to me. You really gotta know that this Portland Metro market is either school foundationally built or trend foundationally built. So when you're looking at the suburbs, Washington County, as well as Clackamas County, very, very stable. There's always gonna be a demand for those great schools, for Intel, for Nike. Mm -hmm. None of that's going anywhere. Nope. Now Multnomah County, really the appeal is being in the heartbeat of Portlandia and all those things you see on the internet, the trendy spots like Hawthorne, Mississippi, Kenton, Selwood, Moreland. The minute that trend kind of goes down, you're gonna see a little less stability in the homes that Homes value, sorry, I got ADD on the lawnmower there. But it's <laughs> not, we're not talking like 20, 30% depreciation or anything crazy like that. But if your timeline is shorter than three years, you really, really, really need to think about location and school. Because if you're gonna be selling that property with us and moving again, the numbers might be tight mm -hmm. on even making money or breaking even. So. You can survive any real estate market with longevity and time in in the property, but three years or less is when you really gotta microscopically analyze it. So finally, let's talk about rentals for you. So a lot of people are reaching out to us lately that are interested in investments, whether that be a primary converting it into a rental property or just outright buying a rental. Let's talk about that real quick. So. When you're in Multnomah County, I don't think it's a secret. Multnomah County is very, I would say it's renter friendly as far as the bylaws go. Most of the places around this area are going to be renter friendly as far as the laws go. With that being said, investing in an area around here, if you're talking about Airbnbs, it's going to be extremely difficult to start up an Airbnb business in Multnomah County at this point, guys. The wait list to even get the approval to be an Airbnb or a short-term rental is so long here. You're gonna be waiting for a year, two years just to get that approval to be on an Airbnb for you. <clears throat> so you're gonna be looking at more so, hey, long-term rentals. So the other thing to look at is your rental base. When you're looking at Portland, you're going to get more of those trendy renters, I say. So you're gonna be looking at more so your Hawthorns, again, your trendy areas, where you're going to get people that aren't necessarily single families. So you are going to be running a little bit more of a risk, in my opinion, as far as what your renters are, their qual the quality standpoint of their concern. So, when you move out to Washington County, so people that do call us don't understand that Washington County actually harbors some good areas for investment properties for rentals. Some of those areas include Aranko Station and Hillsboro, Reed's Crossing for you, the area in Tigard, Beaverton near Mountainside High School. You have a lot of opportunities in those areas for townhomes and single family homes that are easily rentable because of the tech giants like Nike, Intel, and Tektronix out here, where you can get a really quality renter base that are just corporate families, as opposed to, you know, maybe college kids that are throwing keggers at your home. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like that too. And just to add, piggyback off of Lucas, one of the things to understand too, because we do get this call a lot regarding rentals. 
Guys, number one thing, you probably know this if you're in the rental market, it's all about cash flowing or breaking even. It's really challenging with these higher interest rates to structure a loan to which you're cash flowing, meaning you're either breaking even or making a profit relative to the mortgage payment and what you can get for rent. Now, really, you're, you need to have about 40 plus percent down on a property to break even in a rental situation. So we get a lot of people that are like, oh, I got 20, 25%, which is a massive amount of money. And they look at the monthly payment when I structure it for them. It might be 3,300. Then we cross-reference the zip code's potential rental amount, and it's only 25 or 2,600. So they would be losing five or $600 a month owning that asset. We don't want you to be in that situation if we can avoid it. So once again, to Lucas's point, the higher rental spots are gonna be out in your foundationally built areas like Intel and Nike. Yep. There's always gonna be contracts, employees, people that need housing over there. Now, I do feel like there are some potential opportunities within Multnomah County in those trend spots, but the key there is not getting into a property which is a money pit. They might be really appealing from a sales point, from having multiple rooms or a basement, but this is where you lean on the tall man. The tall man's gonna run through it. He's gonna tell you, hey, we got this issue, we got this issue, we got this issue, and he's gonna calculate and let you know how much additional cash it's gonna take to get that asset into a performing level. Exactly. <laughs> so guys, that's kind of our little brief ins and outs between the different counties for you. Again, give us a call, give us a text, give us an email anytime, 24-7. Let's set up a Zoom meeting and let's start talking about your financial goals and what your what your market plan is. Go. And let us help you kind of guide you through and help you make some decisions for you. So again, give us a call, text, email, and don't forget, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit, hit that bell button. Be notified bell. every time we put out a new video, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great day.